seats. And let's dance before the Lord. He's doing a breakthrough here today. Let's dance before the Lord. Come on.
First Chronicles 15.2 says that he commanded no one except for the Levites. Any Levites in the room? We are now worshipers. We are now priests. We are now Levites in the order of Melchizedek through Christ. I'm telling you that right now. And it said that uh, no one may carry the ark except for God, his presence. Does anyone feel his presence in the place today? The Lord has chosen them to carry the ark of the Lord to serve him forever. And in this worship, we were talking about as a worship team, this is happening. This is the sound. This is the sound. This is the start of the sound. This is the start of a prophetic word over the church. The church of Drayton Valley, not a church. And this is, this is the word of the Lord to you today. First Chronicles, please write it down. 1526, may this be in your life right now, right now. And because God was clearly helping the Levites as they carried the Ark of the Lord's Covenant, they sacrificed seven bulls and seven rams. They made a sacrifice because it was clear to all of the people that God was helping them in their worship, bringing his presence into their town, into their community. And I would like to tell you this. It's happening in front of us, before us, and in us right now. It is, if it's not evident to you that the Lord is helping us, are you not breaking through? I don't care if you're standing up or sitting down. In your heart, do you not feel a breakthrough, a lifting of the burden of the Lord in your heart? The dancers are dancing. The cymbals, the high-sounding cymbals, <laughs> the leer. I don't know if it's a lyre, it's a guitar. It's playing in the presence of the Lord, and it's evident to all of us that he's helping the priests carry the presence. Oh, Father, would your presence come into our lives, not just in this meeting, but, Father, into every part of our lives. God, we declare your presence in our businesses. God, we declare your presence, God, in our community. Father, in our schools. God, on our streets. God, in the highways and the byways and the hedges were those that are waiting for the sound to come into their ears so they could hear. And how can they not hear if no one was sent? And Father, would you send us? Would you send us? Please, Lord, the sound. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on. Let's give the worship team a just an awesome, awesome. They were here early. Come on, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Praise God. Wow. Um, sometimes you can say, you can be seated, but I don't really feel like it. If you don't want to be seated, you can stay standing. I don't know, you can sit down after that. Uh, thank you so much, Father. Wow. There are big things happening in the house, are they not? Thank you, Lord. So we just want to uh, invite the kids. You guys go ahead. We just bless you guys. You guys are going to be coming back in a little bit. But we just bless you guys as you go. And we're going to bless you guys as you return very quickly. Wow. Um, as Judy comes up, I just want to, uh, I just want to wish everyone luck in the chili cook-off. Um, it's probably the best chili you guys are ever going to eat. Um, and there, there's, uh, there's quite a few chefs in the room, and there's ones that are even back there, and they're, they're praying over their chili, which I think is unfair. <laughs> so uh, thank you, Judy. <clears throat> I thought he was going to put a plug in for himself, but <laughs> it's offering time. Woo! So I didn't notice if you noticed who was up here. Did the church notice who was up here? Whether you were 70 or almost 70 or two and every age, age in between was up here. And you know what? This church feeds all of them spiritually, sometimes uh, bodily, <laughs> chillily. <clears throat> but you know what? I can't. In my own resources, I can't. I can't feed and touch each one of their lives. But we, the church, can. We can. Things like youth, they come here Friday nights 
and they feed them, and it costs money to do that. The church raises money to do that. Things like super kids, all the kids left the room and now we're half empty. But it takes things in those classrooms to feed them spiritually and feed the leaders that are there. It, it, the church does that collectively. The scripture I want to read is from Luke 16, and it's talking about the, the rich man who has a shrewd servant. Calls him a shrewd servant. And the, the scripture goes, the rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. He had to admire him. And it is true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than the children of light. We're the children of light. But the children of the world deals with the things of the world. Well, the scripture continues. Here is the lesson. Use worldly resources worldly resources to benefit others and make friends then when your possessions are gone they will welcome you to an eternal home and that's what we do in this church we bring tithes and offerings of worldly resources into this home which we then benefit others to usher in eternal life thank you father god for this home thank you for the multi-generation of this home that they're from two to 82 or beyond. And I thank you that you have given each one of us a part to play in that. And thank you for the seed that is being sown today. Let it multiply. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Judy. Good morning, church. I just have a quick couple announcements. Um, tonight, there is no kingdom women or man up. And tomorrow night, there is going to be young adults here. Um, ages 18 to 25 in there. They're going to be doing a karaoke night. So come on out, have some fun, and I'm sure Gabe and Darcy are going to have some food here too, right? Oh, yeah, they're going to have food here too. Uh, Wednesday night service, um, Pastor Darcy is going to be speaking, so come on out to that, 7 o'clock. And... We have Wallace here to tell us about after church. Howdy, y'all. How y'all doing here? Today, Life Church Chili Cook-Off, sponsored by Pepto-Bismol. Y'all coming? Here's what we're doing. You're going to finish up the service here. He's going to preach real fast because y'all know y'all hungry. I'm just joking here. Pass around. Y'all going to go out. I'm going to find the back table there. Chili cook-off table. You're going to buy your tickets. You're going to get your plate. You're going to go. Ten different chilies there, perhaps. You get your samples. You taste test. Y'all get one vote on number one. You take your thing. You vote it up. Whichever's your favorite, you put it in the bucket. We tally up the winners. Top three get some prizes, some tremendous prizes donated by some wonderful sponsors. You'll see what those are a little later. And while, you know, we're going to eat chili, and it's going to be great. I, I ain't allowed to be in it, though, because my mother and mother outlaw lives in Texas, so a little unfair. So I'll just get to carry a microphone around here. All right, oh my see you later. Goodness. Awesome. Oh, I got it. <laughs> where, where did Judy go? Judy, where are you? Come up here, Judy, please. Come on, Judy. I, I have a blessing for you. Come on, Judy. Yeah. So here's, here's one of your chickens back. <laughs> if you guys don't know the story, I'll, I'll let it out of the bag. But uh, Judy uh, and, and Terry were gone, was it last weekend or was it something like that? And I heard rumor that there were some ladies that broke into their house and planted about uh, 75 chickens. And, uh, oh, is it, oh, I let it out of the bag. I'm sorry. <laughs> and obviously she found one because she put it on the pulpit. But uh, God is good. <laughs> hey, just to let you know, uh, at the back, uh, when you walk in, we always have communion. We started doing that a couple of weeks ago. If you feel led, grab a communion cup there. That's the kind of that flip open, right? And if you need directions how to flip that open, see Ernie. 
I, I tried it. Remember back in COVID and we had these, these little things with the flip thing? You don't know how many times I faked the bread thing because I couldn't get the thing open. But, uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> so last week, uh, l- last week Gabe spoke about uh, wells. And it got me to thinking about what kind of wells are we digging? And, and I, it's, it's very interesting how during worship... The, uh, I actually, Gabe didn't hear me. I said, quit preaching my message, Gabe. <laughs> and then the worship team was talking about generational stuff. And then, and then Judy, and I didn't talk to any of these people. And so I can sit down now because you heard my whole message. <laughs> but uh, what kind of well are we, are we digging? And we've, we've, we visited this, I don't know how many years ago, back in twenty. 20, I think it was, 2020, and uh, we're digging a well about, about life and death. Life and death are in the power of the tongue, right? And so I had to examine myself, and Joan was reminding me today that I'm not a saint, and, uh, and for some reason, the unqualified drivers that I find, it just, I, I, don't, I don't do well with them. And uh, like, you ever, you ever parked at IGA parking lot? Like, I love Chris, and I support Chris, and he's just, uh, Chris and, and, and Brittany, they're just awesome people. But the people that shop there, they don't know how to park. Nobody knows how to park in this town. No, that's not true. I know how to park. So, but it's like, <laughs> but it's like, I almost want to get a card, a card, put it on people's windshield that, you know where the light pole is, and then you got the handicap parking? There's no more parking after that. Just let you go know that. There's no more parking. And so when there's only one lane between that car and the, and the entrance, there's a problem. And so these people just need to be educated. Bless them, Lord. Bless them. What, what? What I love about Walmart. Well, let me see now. Oh, I don't have a mic. No, that's all right. What I love about Walmart is they always have, Walmart always has 10 parking spots that say pick up. And I always drive my pickup. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome, Steve. (laughs) Yeah, that's uh, that's good. I've actually thought about. Now I got Yeah, I, my, my mom has a handicap sign that it's in my council of my car. You don't know how many times I want to go, handicap. <laughs> but then, you know, there would be somebody taking the video, you know, look at Pastor Randy parked in a handicap pile. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, how did I get, this is just a, such a rabbit trail, eh? Anyways, our words. Deuteronomy 30, 30, 19, and today apparently we don't have words because there's a problem with the system, and we're still working that out, but uh, you have to either open your Bibles or believe me, but Deuteronomy 30, 19, I call heaven and earth as a witness today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. In every conversation that we have, we enter... We have entertained. We can either entertain a negative or a positive conversation. We can entertain a conversation that brings life or death. We can entertain and and actually adjust the atmosphere that that the words that we speak can shift that into a God discussion, not a worldly discussion. And like I said earlier, I am not perfect. I do do fall off the wagon a couple times and... uh, yeah. Do you ever notice when you're on your way to church and that person that's going up 50th Avenue who's doing 30 kilometers or 25 kilometers? The speed limit is 50 kilometers, just saying. Just saying. James 3, 1 to 18, it says, My brethren, let not many of you become teachers, knowing that we shall receive a stricter judgment. <laughs> For we all stumble in many things. If anyone does not stumble in word, he is a perfect man, able, to, able also to bridle the whole body. Indeed, we put bits in horses' mouths, that 
they may, be, may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Look also at ships. Although they are so large and are driven by fierce winds, they are turned by a small rudder wherever the pilot desires. Even so, the tongue is a little member and boasts great things. See how great a forest a little fire kindles. And the tongue, that just reminds me, Lord, bless those that lost homes and stuff in Jasper. Help them rebuild. And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. The tongue is to set among our members that it defiles the whole body and, and sets on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire by hell. For every kind of beast and bird, of reptile and creature of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by mankind. But no man can tame the tongue. It is unruly, e unruly evil, full of deadly poison. With it we bless our God and Father, and with it we curse men who have been made in the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth we pr proceed blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not to be so. Does a spring send forth fresh water and bitter from the same opening? Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Thus no spring yields both salt and water. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but earthly, sensual, demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are there. But the wisdom that is from above is pure and peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Our words have power. As Pastor Gabe was talking last week about wells, what well are we digging with our words? What well are we digging with our actions? What well are we digging when we relate to one another or to our community? Yesterday we had an a, a awesome time here. Um, I think it, Rob Landers and Mike Holmes, I think it was, they organized this uh, non-denominational um, interdenominational, I guess, uh, breakfast and men's breakfast. And there was roughly 40-some guys here. It was just great. And I didn't hear no negative conversations. Well, that's, that's amazing. That's, that's powerful. And, and, and I, I look at how we interact with each other. We were sitting at a table, and I found out this, this fellow that was a few years older than me, and, uh, and I, I think he was like 55, and... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, well, Joan could be 49, I can be 55. <laughs> but uh, it's weird that our son's 47. <laughs> it's a miracle. <laughs> but uh, the conversations, and I got to hear this guy and, and hear how he was, he was born here and raised here, and, and he still lives on the, the homestead, and, and, and just amazing. The, life, the conversation was full of life. Then I heard about the, the, some of the sound that's coming out of Drayton Valley for, from him as well. And, and he had a kidney problem, and they were, they were setting him up to have uh, uh, dialysis. And God healed him. The doctor's going, oh, what? You know? And so I got, to, I got to share my story about how God healed my ears. Yeah. You know? and, and, and I'm believing that God's going to complete the healing in my physical body in Jesus' name. Amen? God is good. So our conversations can be something that glorifies God or glorifies the world if we partake in them. Amen? So what well are we digging? See, I'm very optimistic and I have great faith and anticipation of what God is doing. You heard Pastor Gabe say about uh, the sound. It's not just this church. It's the body of Christ in our community. And, and if I entertain all these negative conversations or negative things to, to watch or to listen to, it's going to affect that optimistic view that I believe God has downloaded to us. It's going to affect the, the word giving about the sound coming out of Drayton Valley. We need to be focused on him, Jesus, not things of this world. We deal with things of this world, yeah, 
That's not a problem. We do that. But if it overpowers it, or if it overtakes our conversations, then that's not glorifying to God. Amen? Yeah. I am going to cut it short because of our... our uh, I, I always say to the worship team, if we're going to cut, if we're on a time limit, we, I can adjust my message because God was in the, flowing in this house. When you get this old man running around in front of the stage, and like, was, like I'm telling you, I was, I looked over at Steve and I said, he wants to dance. I knew it. <laughs> you know, I looked at Lonnie and he's there and he's, God, he, he wants to dance. And then, then Tom Thompson got up here and we did the hokey pokey, turn yourself around, you know, and, and it was just amazing. God is a good, good father. Yeah. How many felt a breakthrough when you were up here dancing today? Come on. It was amazing. And, 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 and I don't know who was in the back and who was at the front, but God was everywhere in the house. By the way, if you're at the back and you're, you're, you're sitting down, you, you miss part of the anointing you you just it's like the only time i sat at the back was in school <laughs> god was in the house let's talk about the good things let's talk about what he's done for us the salvations the the healings the the, uh, how, how he's pouring out his spirit upon this church and other churches in our community. How he's, he's changing lives. We had a young fellow here yesterday, and he had put Jesus on the shelf. And, and, and uh, I was asked to come over by Rob to say, hey, this guy wants to pray and, and rededicate his life to the Lord. And, and so I got to pray with him, and, and then we prayed for him, and some amazing things happened. Those are good things. Yeah. Things that Jesus, only Jesus, can do. Yeah. Not on our own strength. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. I'm going to move forward to the second well that I, that I see. We have the well of life, and this well is a generational well. I can't remember exactly. I was asking Joan, and she, I think it was either 28 or 27 years ago, this church started. This church has always been a generational church. Every generation, as you've seen even today, with Autumn on the stage, has, has a, a place to fit in, has a place to minister. It doesn't matter if you're 66 years old or, or if you're 7 years old, you have a place to minister. And... and and so that well that has been dug over the years, I believe God has taken to us another place that we're going to dig deeper into that well. That well, as we dig into that, this, I believe that the, the youth, the, the super kids, will, will have a voice. There will be a sound that comes out of this building, out of this church, out of these people, out of these young adults, these, these youth, these children, that, that's going to impact way beyond these four walls. Is anybody else excited about this besides me? Come on. It, it, is, it is, I'm telling you, as Wallace, Wallace, don't go out and stir your chili. Let it burn. <laughs> By the way, uh, speaking of the chili, Terry and I, he, uh, he, we, co, we co-partnered in this chili. And uh, it's going to be the best Canadian chili you've ever had. And if, and, and if, I, if I don't win, I'll get over it. <laughs> but if I don't win, there's a conspiracy. I, that's what I can say. <laughs> but I look at the super kids. I look at these, the youth, as we heard on Friday nights with the youth that happened. And, and, and every Sunday, the youth that happened. Uh, Pastor Joan has uh, started this year mentoring some young ladies, and, 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 and Aaron has helped her a couple times, and Pastor or Bev Thompson has helped her a couple times, and, and it's something that has eternal value. She teaches them about the Bible, teaches them about godly principles and godly values, and even practical things like cooking, and and. 
And every one of us has that ability to, like Summer, you, you, you experienced some of that, didn't you? Hey, we had a five-course meal the other night at our house that the youth helped Joan prepare. Actually, Joan kind of supervised and Judy, and, and, and the youth put this thing on, and it was phenomenal. And chicken cordon bleu was amazing, and uh, you all missed out. <laughs> The, the, us investing into this next generation, this, 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 like people like Autumn when she was a kid, and then, and then like now she's this young lady that is just enters into worship. That's fruit. Yeah. I was looking for Corey today, but I don't see him here. And, and I'm thinking about when I moved here 21 years, well, 21 and a half years ago, the, the, Corey was like 14 or something like that. And, and him and, and uh, who was it, Matt, Matt French, were leading our youth, yeah. these teenagers. And, and I look at them today, and then now Corey, is it, it's, out, it's out of the bag now, right? Yeah. And, and there's Corey now that he's the chief of staff for the Minister of Forestry. And, and, and I'm thinking, what is going on here? Thank you, Jesus, that somebody invested into him, his mom, this family invested into him to see what's happening today. I almost think if he wanted to step into it, he, one day he could be our premier. Come on. If he wanted to. I think there's, there's, a, there's a mantle on every youth. I, we should call those youth in, okay? Because just for time, we want to go get the, teen, the, the kids, super kids. And any youth that here on a Friday night... I want you to come. Worship team, I want you to come. Every, every child, every individual, every youth, every young adult, every person mature in age <laughs> has a purpose from God. But I believe the well that we need to dig or dig deeper is that generational well. You can, you can sit on the stage if you want, okay? Okay. The little kids, they won't see. We'll bring the little guys up here. And, and uh, they're all important. They're all worth us digging the well. So that when they're our age, their children's children will be able to say, look what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. I look at my... As my mother would say, the newlyweds over there. That he thinks he's going to win the chili contest. <laughs> but, but I was thinking about how he, when he moved into our house in grade 10, I think it was, something like that. And, and to see him today, how God has taken Isaiah to this, he's a, he's a married man now. Are you guys having babies this year? Is that... <laughs> but I look at them and I go, thank you, Jesus. I look at Michelle back there when, when she was just young, and you know, and, and, and now she serves like with whole heart. She makes one of the best Carol Macchiatos you ever have. But she's not just a... A, a coffee maker. She's not just a barrister. She is a fine, strong young lady who, you guys are awesome. Just line up, guys. I hear people say about you want to be in the ministry. I guarantee you, if you step, take a step of faith and go into ministry, the ministry of our super kids or our youth, like it's culture shock youth, it will pay dividends down the road. Something that MasterCard can't buy. It will be a place where, where these children, when they are now like Corey's age or, or who, that age group that used to be teens when I first came here that are adults now. 
that investment you pour into them will be priceless. It will have eternal value. Jesus. Sure, you can bring them up here. Just uh, give these children a hand. Amen. you guys we're going to do a worship song and then I'm going to speak a blessing over these children and I have I have three questions I want you to ask yourself during this time of worship one question is this what kind of well have you been digging with your words what kind of well have you been digging with your actions and ask the Lord, is there a place for you to minister to young people, to children? This is something that I'm telling you, on my wall in my office at home, I counted the other day, there, I think there's 17 youth in this picture that I took from my patio in Tumblr Ridge, and they're all laying in the circle and heads to like towards the center of the circle. And I look at those, those, they're all like 37 to 43 now. And I'm thinking, Lord, bless them. Bless them. The value that we place on our children is amazing. Let's just worship and then we're going to pray, okay?
wanted you to know that God says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. The world has lots of things to say. But the world, the world is not lining up. The world is not lining up to what God says you are. Okay? He says that you are made in their image. God says that in his word. He says that you are made in his image. God says that you are more than conquerors. God says that you are a blessing. Isn't that cool? So don't let anybody say otherwise because you guys are valued. You guys are appreciated. And by the way, Pastor Randy says you can run in the front of the church just like us old guys were doing earlier. Okay? And, and parents and adults, if you got a problem with these children running in the front, join them. <laughs> so God, I bless them. I bless each one that is here. And the ones that aren't here, Father, that call this church their home, I bless them in Jesus' name. I just call forth the gifting. Do you know that in Jeremiah 1.5 it says that he knew you in the womb and he set you apart. Let's walk together and see what that gift and calling is upon your life. Amen? Come on. You guys are precious. You guys are valued. And don't ever let anybody say that you're not. Amen? Well, Father, I thank you, Lord, for our youth, our children. God, I thank you for those that serve in the ministry. In Jesus' name. God, I thank you that you're speaking to us. God, as we, as we amplify the sound, as these young people amplify the sound that's coming out of Drayton Valley. God, would you speak to them and let us not get in the way of what you're calling them to do. You are amazing. <laughs> you are amazing. Hey? You are amazing. Kingston, you rock, buddy. Bill. How you doing, Bill? Hey? Well, I could tell you that God showed me what your name was, but it's on your shirt. <laughs> God, I just, I just, I just, guys, I just marvel at these children. They are so precious. So precious. Let's be on guard for them. Let's pray for them. I look at, at I look at Lonnie when I first met him and <laughs> he's a pot smoking skateboarder. Oh, did you, did you, do your kids know that? I'm sorry, I let it up. <laughs> But I look at him now, and I'm thinking, but oh, by the way, he's preaching next Sunday. God is a God that has no boundaries to, to his kingdom. There's no boundaries. There's like, if we step in, he says, come with me, daughter. Come with me, son. And he walks us through it. Again, every one of you young people, you are valued, and I encourage you to just step into gift and calling that God has for your life. Amen? If you're here today and you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior, he's got an amazing journey for you. And I'm telling you, something like 33 years ago, when I was a bit younger, I took a step of faith and asked Jesus to come into my life. I didn't know what it was going to look like, but I know God is a God of restoration. He's an equal opportunity God. He has amazing things planned for you. If you're here today, you've never received him as your Savior, or like the fellow yesterday 
who put Jesus on the shelf for a while and, and said, no, I, I, I want to take Jesus off the shelf and I want to walk with him. If that's you today, I just want you to raise your hand. I see you, young lady. Anybody else? I see you back there, sir. Anybody else? Because what he has in store, I see you guys back there. I, I see God is moving and he has an amazing journey for all of us. All we got to do is say, yes, Lord, and he takes us on the journey. Let's pray together. Father, for those who raise their hand, just, God, repeat that to me, girls and guys. Father, come into my life. I want to go on a journey with you. I know I've fallen short in some areas. Forgive me for that, Lord. But I'm putting my trust in you, and I'm saying yes to you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. <laughs> Parents, uh, if you want to grab your, take your children um, and do the taste test. I don't know what the structure is for the chili, but uh, if it's a financial thing, don't let a financial thing stop you from taking a test, okay? And uh, please vote for me. And... Uh, <laughs> Be blessed, you guys. Thank you, worship team.